Hi everyone, welcome to SVC Youth Online. My name's Tom and I'm part of the youth team here at Sutton Vineyard Church. We're still missing you loads, but we really appreciate that we can share with you in this way and also in our small groups on a Sunday evening. If you're not part of one of our small groups but want to be, please get in contact with Ben by emailing youth at suttonvineyard.org or by phoning or texting him if you've got his number. Likewise, if you're new to Sutton Vineyard and want to know a little bit more about what youth looks like here, you can get in touch as well by email. At the moment, we're going through a series called Even Me, where we look at ordinary people who did amazing things. This week, it's Joshua. So grab whoever you can from your family. Find your Bible if you've got one, but don't worry if you don't. And if you like to take notes, grab a notebook as well. We're going to start with a game but first I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we can still keep in contact as a youth group at this time and meet together in so many new and different ways. I pray for everyone that's taking part in this session that they will be able to learn something new and enjoy themselves. Amen. Right, in this game you need two or more people to play. Person one is going to go and find a storybook. They'll then read 30 seconds of the story to everyone else. Person two is then going to repeat back what they can remember of the story. Sounds simple enough. However, whilst they're repeating back their story, person one is going to try and distract them. Now they can't touch person two, but they can do everything else they want to try and distract them. They can make noise, they can play music, they can try and make them laugh get creative. Take turns and try this a couple of times and see how you find it following on from someone else when there are so many distractions around you. Have fun!
how did you get on with that game? It's quite hard isn't it? It's quite hard to follow on from someone else um, when you can't maybe remember everything that they've said and when you have distractions. Um, and today in, in the person that we're going to be focusing on, we're going to be hearing how they followed on from someone else and, and how hard that was for them as well. But before we get there, we're going to do another game and this is one that I really love. Um, and how you're going to do this is taking it in turns um, you're going to make a story but by just saying one word at a time each. So you'll go around the different people in your group just saying one word to make a story. The funnier the story, the better, the wackier, the better. Um, but just see how you get on together. Have fun! <laughs>
guys, I really hope you enjoyed playing that game. So the reason for playing the game today is because we're looking at Joshua, we need to know what came before to really understand the significance of him taking the lead. So like in the game, what comes before affects what comes after. So a couple of questions are gonna come up for you guys now. Just take a couple of minutes to read through and discuss them with whoever you're with, and then we can move on.
All right, welcome back. Thank you for uh, going with that. I hope the discussion was good and that you chatted through some things that are gonna help you when we uh, hear in a few minutes about Joshua. Uh, for me, thinking about how I respond to change, I think um, myself and Sarah are pretty different. I prefer things to stay the same and I like things to be as they were. I'm quite a routine guy, whereas Sarah loves change. She really, uh, she just sees a whole load of opportunities within it. Uh, so as I was reading that, I was just reminded of the difference between us. Uh, so I hope that that was helpful for you guys as well. But what we're going to do now is I'm excited to be joined by Lucy and um, we're going to chat to her about a um, something that we shared together last year that was something that was nerve wracking for both of us. Uh, but Lucy's just going to share some of her experiences and some of her thoughts on um, a trip that we went on. So, um, first question, Lucy, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what the trip was and um, tell us a little bit about Aslan? Uh, yeah, so last year, November, there was a team of about 10 of us. Uh, we went over to Cape Town. We were there for just under two weeks and we went and joined the amazing work that Aslan do out there in the townships. Uh, we did many projects, uh, for example, we went to one of the townships, we created a little garden for the kids so they could grow their own crops. Um, in another township, we redecorated a library. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. I think for me, one of my favourite highlights will have to be um, the sports day um, because it was so lovely to see all the children playing with the footballs and like the hockey sticks. And then we all came together and we all just sang a worship song in so many different languages. And it was a very powerful moment. Mm. So yeah, that's been my highlight. Yeah, so for me, that was pretty powerful. Just seeing people, like adults crying as they heard worship songs sung amazingly in a different language. And there were probably, what, four, four? 400 of us all in all in that room just for the like the main sessions or services um so can you remember some of the things before we went that you were nervous about um i think one thing in particular was um the safety for us as a team um the townships can be quite like a dangerous place so for us going into there we were putting ourselves out there in a vulnerable place so yeah i think that was one thing that we were all quite concerned about going there um, for me personally, this was my first mission trip, so I didn't really know exactly what to expect. So that was again something that I was quite nervous about going there. And can you remember, while we were there, can you remember doing something scary that you were just out of your comfort zone on? And how did it work out? I think it has to be when we were doing the park project, I think, when we just... We were so in the township and like anything could have happened, so it was quite like a scary moment and I think yeah like that for me when we was there and there was obviously people living in the park that we had to work around was just something that was quite real but I just kind of like trusted God and thought we're doing something amazing here just kept going we're all fine um, and the kids now have an amazing park to play with so yeah I guess that was one scary point for me yeah great all right um and Last question, what was the biggest thing you learned from the trip? Massive question, I know. So there's a lot of things I think I took from that trip. One thing in particular was trusting God. Um, like you hear it all the time in church and like you're always saying, yeah, trust God in this and that. But I think when you're in that place, um, you just really do trust him. Um, so I think that was one thing I learned. Something else I also learned was just um, to never take my life for granted. Like when you see kids walking around in a playground with no shoes or you see families living in small places. I think mm. it just, just like really hits you that you should not take your life for granted because we have so many things here. Well, Lucy, thank you for, for sharing with us. And um, yeah, thank you for your honesty within all of that. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to have a Bible reading and then Grace is going to come and talk to us all about Joshua. So enjoy. But Lucy, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, 
You and all these people get ready to cross the River Jordan into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all of the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead the people, these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it in the day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Hello everyone, uh, I hope you're all doing really well this evening. It is so wonderful to be able to talk to you all. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Grace. I've been a part of Sutton Vineyard for a really, really long time. Although I haven't really been around that much this year, uh, I've been doing the first year of my degree at Exeter. Uh, but for this evening, I will be continuing our Even Me series, which Maisie kicked off a few weeks ago with her talk on Samuel, and Ben continued last week looking at Moses. Now, if you haven't seen those, then they're not a precursor for this evening. Uh, you don't need to have listened to those to understand what I'm going to talk to you about, but if you haven't checked those out, I would really recommend doing so, as both Ben and Maisie have come up with some really interesting points. But this evening, it's part three of the series and I will be talking to you about Joshua uh, and thank you very much to Kala for that wonderful reading from Joshua 1. So if there are any note takers out there, like I know I am, uh, today I will be focusing on the idea of expectation. So uh, that's a very good title to write down and uh, within expectation how we don't feel good enough, how we often don't feel special enough to do the things that God has asked us to do and uh, that they can just be they can just be too much for us to complete on our own. And within that rather broad focus, uh, I'll be looking at two subsections, human expectation and godly expectation. But first, a very important question to answer to give us a little bit of context, who was Joshua? Uh, so we can feel like Joshua only really appears at this point where he takes over from Moses as the leader of the Israelites. However, he has an important role both before and after this point. Uh, and he isn't chosen to be the next leader of the Israelites out of the blue. He was actually Moses' aide for a very long time beforehand. Uh, he, as, as Moses' aide, he led armies into successful battles. Uh, he was there when the Ten Commandments were first given to Moses. And he was also one of the 12 spies that first went into the Promised Land. And then after this appointment, he does indeed go on to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land, which I will touch on a little bit later. So... Uh, let's get into the first point, number one, human expectation. And like I said, sometimes this can just make us feel unworthy or not good enough to do the things that God has asked us to do. And we can see that Joshua might have felt this way. Uh, he was expected to live up to the very big reputation of Moses. Uh, Moses was the man that freed the Israelites from generations of slavery. He gave them the Ten Commandments, he gave them the Tabernacle, and he was just all round a very strong leader. Verse 5 says, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And it is undeniable that in his leadership of the Israelites, God really was with Moses. But it's important to remember that he wasn't always. Joshua didn't know the Moses that stood at the burning bush and almost refused to do what he was called to do, who said, even me. And it's great to be inspired by people like Moses. It's uh, great to be encouraged by their really good reputations and their godly leadership. 
but uh, what we shouldn't do with that is then place the expectation on ourselves to be perfect just like they are. Um, I don't know about you, but often when I go to places like DTI and Soul Survivor, I can be really inspired by the stories that are shared there. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I'm just always thinking that I could never do that myself. There would always be something that would hold me back. And I think of one year at DTI when a boy got on stage to share a time where he prayed with a non-Christian friend at school to be healed from an injury. And that person was healed. He, he, he prayed for his friend and they were healed. Um, and I was just blown away by this boy's confidence. I mean, he was barely older than 11 or 12 and he went to such a high pressured environment like school and he willingly put himself out there. He had the courage as God gives, uh, as God tells Joshua to have. And he had the expectation that God would provide in that moment, he would provide that healing. And I really distinctly remember thinking to myself, I could never do that, I would just be too afraid. And um, what I'm seeing isn't the full story. And that's really important to remember there, that uh, there will be times where that boy's relationship with God is rocky, that he's, he's unsure, or he just doesn't do the things that God has asked him to do. And the important thing to remember there is that rather than expecting to be perfect all the time, he had the courage in that very one moment to do something that maybe he felt called to do by God and uh, without the guarantee that it was perfect and it still pulled off, it still worked, that friend was still healed. And Zeke actually summed this up really well uh, in his talk a few weeks ago on Saul in Acts where he said it's not about your ability but your availability and that again is something really important to remember that God doesn't choose people expecting them to get it right all the time because nobody ever will and God knows that. He instead chooses them knowing that they're gonna give it a go, that in some moments they're going to say yes and that's something we can all do. And we don't actually see the behind the scenes uh, action of Joshua's decision, whether he said yes immediately, though I know that I definitely wouldn't have done. Uh, maybe he questioned even me but the important thing is that he said yes, he made himself available in that moment. Uh, he didn't let other people's expectations or the reputation of Moses uh, weigh him down or get in the way of being God's servant. And that ends up really paying off later where he leads the Israelites into the promised land. So, our first point, human expectation. We can see in the life of Joshua really clearly that it can be a lot to live up to the expectations and the reputations of others. But in reality, it's really important to remember that God will never give us anything that we cannot handle. Um, I must add that this <laughs> means that sometimes we really are gonna mess it up. Um, I know that I've had words and pictures for people that have just completely missed the mark but the important thing is that in that situation I approached it with God at my side with kind of a give it a go mentality um, it's important that we remember that uh, God chooses the people that are available and not always the perfectly able so moving on to our second point godly expectation kind of the uh, flip side of the coin if you like to human expectation godly expectation and the expectation of God's provision and often I can personally find that I almost use God's provision as an excuse the expectation of God's provision as an excuse I think to myself well I could I could do that I could pray for that person um, but only if God gave me something only if he gave me courage only if he gave me a word or a picture for them and I 100% knew that it was him then I would be able to do that and often without those things uh, it can feel like the tasks ahead of us are too much fast for us to handle and although we can often long for this concrete evidence of God at our side the important thing is uh, he is always always with us and that is the reality just as God promises Joshua in verse 9 for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go and when he is with you he provides 
Uh, personally, when I started university last September, I was really nervous. Um, making friends hasn't ever been something that's been very easy for me. Um, and so moving a very long way away from my family, uh, pretty much my only prayer was that I would make some friends. And more importantly within that, I would make some Christian friends. And so uh, in Freshers Week, my flat had a spare bedroom. There were 11 of us rather than 12, and we thought that maybe that would just be a spare bedroom for the year. However, halfway through the week, our final roommate, Emily, joined. And on our first evening hanging out together, I found, that, I found out that not only was she a Christian, but she also lived in Kingston, which is barely a half an hour drive away from my home in Sutton. And so over this past year, Emily and I have found a church together. Uh, we have walked to and from church together nearly every Sunday. And it's just been such a great experience and so comforting to have another Christian in the flat with me. And although at the beginning of Freshers Week, it looked like I would be the only Christian, God did deliver on my prayer by placing Emily and I in the same flat together. He provided what I asked for me. And the Israelites themselves often, uh, well, within this passage, actually have a very interesting relationship with the expectation of God's provision. This passage isn't just for Joshua, it has an important meaning for the rest of the Israelites as well. And by the opening of Joshua, uh, leaving Egypt wasn't fresh in everyone's memory. For some people, they had been born, they'd grown up, and they'd had their own children, all whilst wandering in the wilderness. And this expectation of God's provision for the promised land stems all the way back to Abraham, which is very briefly mentioned in the passage. Uh, you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors. And God did not forget this, despite it being generations, not only since they had left Egypt, but since the promise had been originally made to Abraham. And he always delivers on his promises, God always delivers, even if it feels like it's a long time to wait. And actually, importantly, uh, God also delivers for the Israelites in the waiting as well as in the end. Um, think of the manna, manna bread that fell from heaven to feed all of them whilst they were in the wilderness. Although there was a bigger goal ahead of the Israelites finding the promised land, whilst they were waiting for that goal to be fulfilled, God didn't forget them and he continued to provide in those moments. So that is a lot of expectation weighing on Joshua's shoulders. He is leading God's promised people into their promised land that they have been waiting for for generations. Uh, and he's also taking over from one of the Bible's greatest leaders. And yet, just like for Moses, just like in the wilderness, God continues to provide. Uh, Joshua does indeed end up leading the Israelites into the promised land. And he does it because he relies on God's promise, never to leave him and to protect him all of the days of his life. By trusting that God will provide, Joshua is able to fulfill those expectations placed on his shoulders. Now, we personally might not be uh, doing what Joshua is doing. We might not be leading an entire nation into a land promised to them by God. But when you break it down and when you really think about it, that promise by God uh, for him to always be at our side and the command to be strong and courageous is applicable to us as well. Uh, maybe it's in your family situation. Maybe it's in the chaos and anxiety of returning to work or even a big life event. Um, but God will never leave you, forsake you or give you anything he cannot solve. So... To recap kind of what we've been talking about today, uh, expectation really is a really big limitation, uh, especially when we feel like we're expected to live up to the reputation of others. Joshua had the reputation of Moses and the expectation of leading the Israelites into the promised land. With all of that on his shoulders, he still said yes to leading them. He still made himself available. And in the end, all the promises of God came true because they always do. Although we can feel like we aren't enough, uh, the uh, reality is no one ever is. No human can ever be perfect and always live up to the expectations placed on us. 
not the leaders we might see at the front of church or on the stage at DTI or even in the Bible. We can't expect ourselves to be perfect, that's for sure. Um, but what we also cannot do is doubt that we can do what God has asked of us. Because if we say yes, just like Joshua, the craziest things can happen. So uh, let's just pray to finish. Um, God, we thank you so much that you are always by our side. And I pray for each and every young person this evening that as they go out into their week, they would have the opportunities to be strong and courageous. That the expectations of others, the reputations of others would not weigh them down and throughout this week they would have the opportunities to live out your word and be strong and courageous for you. Amen. Thank you so much guys for joining us this evening and I hope to see you all again really, really soon.